Hey everyone, today I thought I'd make a video showing some of what I eat on a daily basis where here sardines are most definitely at the top of my list. And why is this? Well, because recently I had a coronary calcium score of 1100 and part of a heart healthy diet in my goal of stopping and even possibly reducing this disease includes omega-3 fatty acids where sardines are very high in these. So these seasoned brand are packed in olive oil which I drain because the 200 calories per can is drained. And there's about 25 grams of oil in each can which would add another 220 calories in fat alone. Now, of course, if you were storing these for a famine or recession, the oil would be valuable because, of course, it's a form of energy and calories. But for me at present, there's no famine and I need to watch my fat intake because I also had an experience with highly elevated lipids, which I talk about in my video called my keto cholesterol conundrum. And I usually keep a few extra cans in stock. And for the most part, I eat them right out of the can after I drain them, where I also like to add some Frank's Red Hot, but also this Braswell's Mustard, where here is the Champagne Dill, also delicious on any fish or meat. They also make a Chipotle Mustard, which is really nice and smoky. Very good. Now here I also usually keep an extra bottle of omega-3 in the form of cod liver oil where after my own research the biggest bang for the buck concerning EPA and DHA is the Carlson brand where these larger bottles I purchase online. Yeah, maybe I should put some of that on my door, huh? Oh yeah. I also keep a variety of supplements in the refrigerator such as straight up DHA, omega-3, and krill oil. Now another thing that is highly beneficial to eat on the daily basis is sauerkraut, also good for the heart, of course due to its antioxidant properties and healing. And here I actually make my own sauerkraut which is very easy using one of these German crocs or you can make it in mason jars where I store it in mason jars. And this crock holds about 10 pounds of cabbage, where if I try to put any more than that in it, it's hard to get these stones in there, which hold the cabbage down under the water, important, so it doesn't get moldy. Because I like to let it ferment at least four weeks. So as soon as I'm emptying out a batch, I'm making another one. So if you're eating sauerkraut with a purpose, 10 pounds a month goes pretty quick. And the reason I purchased this crock. Now I used to purchase and shred heads of cabbage, but now I just buy these two pound bags at Sam's Club, which not only saves a lot of time, but it saves a big mess from having to shred up 10 pounds of cabbage. So for me here, the only tool I need is a scissors. Now, of course, there's a ton of videos on YouTube on how to make sauerkraut, but this is how I do it. I simply empty one bag into the crock, then add a tablespoon or so of salt, pickling salt, very important. Then after this, you want to smash on it, pound on it. You want to get the juices released. And I use this wooden tamper, which is made especially for this purpose. And as the salt begins to release the liquid and I pound it down, the cabbage begins to condense down so I can fit more into the crock. It's like making lasagna. You add a bag of cabbage, you sprinkle salt, you pound on it, and then you repeat until you fill it up to the desired level. And with these crocks, you have to leave room in the top so you can get the weighted stones in there. Oh yeah, and another thing to consider is that when using these crocks, the fact is that they're breakable, okay? And when you are slamming the cabbage with this wooden tamper, you don't want to do that. No! 
Now, you know what they say, if life gives you lemons, you keep making sauerkraut. So what I've had to do here is resort back to the mason jar method. So if you're using mason jars, you want to now use a separate container to pound the salted cabbage and simply transfer it to the mason jars. And don't be a knucklehead like me who has a big heavy cutting board on a granite countertop that slides around where I've set these glass jars on the work surface that I'm pounding on where the cutting board's sliding and the jars are sliding and I could easily slip and knock those jars on the floor and have another glassy mess on my hands. So again, you just repeat pounding the cabbage, filling the jars, pounding the cabbage, filling the jars until you get all the jars packed tight. Behold, eight pounds of cabbage in six mason jars. Now, although the cabbage will release more liquid over time, right now there's not enough liquid to cover it. So what you do is just make some salt brine water and then you add it to each jar just to cover up the cabbage. Now, I personally don't use any specific ratio here. I just go by taste. And as you see by my reaction, this is plenty salty. So here I go. Just fill up the containers. And we're almost finished. We are also understand this cabbage will float. And you want to keep it down under the liquid. While at the same time keeping the air out so mold won't grow. So if I'm not using a crock, I'm using these handy airlock lids. And that's how I make sauerkraut, which I enjoy with my sardines. So yeah, it's sauerkraut and sardines. Mm, mm, mm. Daily for heart health. Hey, honey. Yeah. Would you like some lunch? Sure. How about some sauerkraut and sardines? No, that's okay. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>